Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown. It is Friday. It is July 7th. Happy Friday to you guys. We are back. We're going to go over this slate today. Before we do, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all of our videos. Helps us out tremendously. Can't do it without you guys. Now, if you have not already, come join us at Lionstar. Only $29.99 gets you access to all of our DFS and all of our prop stuff. And we also have a free three-day trial on both of the app stores. You have to go to the app stores, though, to get the free trial. It is not available on the website. However, once you do download the app and get the free trial, you can then go to the website and use that free trial. But you have to get the free trial through the apps. All right. Now... We're going to go through yesterday's slate quickly, the perfect lineups and the winning lineups, and then we're going to jump into the ownership for the pitchers and go over the pitchers a little bit and then get into the stacks. All right, so yesterday's perfect lineup, Carlos Carrasco, Julio Yorias. And uh, then we had a nice little Met stack here, and surprisingly... No more Baltimore, or sorry, only a two-man Baltimore uh, stack when they went absolutely nuts. So it was a very interesting slate yesterday. Uh, the Mets and Baltimore just had their self a day. So uh, they definitely dominated a little bit. And now let's check out the perfect lineup. So, or sorry, the winning lineup. So we had George Kirby and Bradish as the two pitchers in this winning lineup now they neither of them were in the perfect lineup but their scores weren't that far off and the guy that won was able to stack five Baltimore guys three Mets guys and that's really what did it for him there so congrats to uh S boy point point 10 10 I don't know if I even should try and say your name, but I did. But uh, he took it out by a .25 points with the old Baltimore verse and Met stack. Got it done. First time in a while that it's been a 5-3 and not a 5-2-1 to take the lead. But when you have, you know, team scoring 9 and 14 runs, that kind of tends to happen. All right, now let's check out the FanDuel lineup. And... Whenever it gets there. All right. So we got Carlos Carrasco. We got two Baltimore guys and only one Mets. Um, as usual, you know, the FanDuel perfect lineup is always a little bit harder to hit than uh, the DraftKings one. But now let's check out the winning lineup. So Julio Urias, he is a guy I definitely talked up yesterday on FanDuel at only 10% owned at his price. I just thought he was a steal. 46 fantasy points is pretty solid. And then the winning lineup, the construction of four-man Baltimore, three-man Mets with one Cleveland player. So 4-3-1, got it done here. Good job, BP, Colonna. You got it done. Uh, great lineup, man. I a lot of correlation. Got all the players that went really nuts, you know, except for Marte. But, uh... Really didn't didn't matter when you had Alonzo, Jimenez, <laughs> Henderson, and Lindor all in the same lineup. Congrats to you. Uh, you also you only won by three uh, three points there. Let's check out what the, the Colonel had. Uh, so Bradish at thirteen percent owned, forty three points. So there's really the difference in salary wise. These two guys were uh, very similar priced. As you can see, it is pretty much, or it is the same lineup, same hitters in both. The one difference is this three point pitcher difference here. And uh, going Urias over Bradish was the difference. So congrats to them. Now let's get into the fun of today's slate um so we do got a 12 gamer and there's a lot of different ways we can go on this slate 
There's no huge standout spot. Definitely the best hitting weather is in Boston and in Washington. Both spots, you know, fairly warm with uh, winds going out. Uh, I don't believe we're going to have any real PPD issues on this slate. But, you know, as always, just make sure you're uh, checking it out when it comes a little closer to lock here. All right. So today's slate, the pitcher, we got Andrew Abbott coming in at the highest owned, almost 35%. He's 9,900. This dude has been unreal lately. 3.4 FIP. Uh... 3.38 so far in this season here. But the big thing here is almost a 30% K rate. So his first couple games, that K rate wasn't very good, but he has shown up big time lately. 10 Ks against Colorado, 8 against Baltimore, 12 against San Diego. And now he's facing a Brewers team that's striking out almost 27%. They're also not great as a whole versus lefties. So it's a really good matchup. Uh, I know last time he pitched, we talked about it a little bit. There is a little bit of worry with his stat cast data. Ton of fly balls, 52% fly balls, 33% hard contact, a lot of barrel balls. So if you want to fade him, this is why I believe there likely is some regression coming. Um, I mean, his ERA is two points lower than his FIP, where his FIP is like, Look, he's been a very good pitcher. I am not debating that. But his ERA is two points lower than his FIP. That's just not really sustainable. There is going to be some regression with him. I don't know if it's today or not. I just wanted to give you that as, you know, kind of the reason to fade him if you want to. He is higher owned. um, But he is in a good spot. This Brewers offense is not good. So... You make the call if you want to fade him or not. I don't really know what I'm going to do yet on that standpoint. Uh, Next, we got Corbin Burns. Corbin, who has turned it around uh, a little bit here. He's been pitching well lately, 3.28 FIP. Uh, This K rate's not quite up there where you'd want 24% K rate here, 22% combined K rate. His stat cast data is looking pretty good, though, 33% soft contact. That is a lot of soft contact. So don't mind that. And the Reds have just kind of struggled versus Burns in the past. Uh, But, you know, this Red team is on fire right now and hitting pretty well and hitting very well versus righties. 191 ISO. So league average ISO is like 140. So as a team, they're hitting 50 points higher in ISO. Means they're hitting the ball really hard. Their Woba is really good. This offense is for real, it seems. So it's a tough matchup for Burns, but he's also not very pricey there. Hunter Brown coming in next. You know, he's been really good. He's fallen off a little bit lately. 4.46 FIP opposed to that 3.37. Has a decent K rate. The combined K rate is solid today at 25%, largely because Seattle strikes out at 25%. So I don't mind it. There is some upside You'll have a little bit of a floor because of that K uh, K upside there. But um, I don't love it. Line star doesn't love it. Only a 14-point projection. Uh, Corbin Burns was 16 at a little cheaper, too. Next, we got Gallon. Gallon's another guy that's fallen off a little bit lately after just an amazing start. Now, one thing I need to bring up today is he is averaging 51% more fantasy points at home. He has been much better at home. If you can see, pretty much all of his major, major big ceiling games were at home. Um, But he's been good all year and definite Cy Young candidate uh, this year. The one thing I have to bring up is that K rate's only 22% at 9,600. However, Line Star still does like him at a uh, 22-point projection. Luis Castillo is coming in next. A lot of good pitchers on this slate. A lot of different ways you can go here. 19 uh, fantasy points there he has struggled lately 6.5 or 4.2 fit three percent less on the k rate more walks than normal he hasn't been in the grace greatest spots lately and averaging 56 percent less fantasy points when he's away don't think this is a great matchup for castillo however castillo is 
one of the few pitchers in the game that against anybody can have an outstanding outing. So I wouldn't totally cross him off. Leinstar is liking it here, but there are a lot of indicators that maybe this is not the way to go today. Um, Dylan Cease. Cease has turned, turned around. Had uh, Went through a rough patch here. Had five straight perfect lineups. Didn't do great against Oakland last time out. But look, this guy's been the real deal lately. 2.73 FIP over his last five. 34% K rate. Combined K rate we have for him today is 28%. He's in a decent spot versus, uh, versus these Cardinals. So I don't mind going here at 8,500. However, Lionstar isn't loving him that much with only a 14-point projection. Uh, Savali. So surprisingly, his K line today is 5.5 Ks. We only have a combined K rate of 22%, which usually I don't think would get you to 5.5 Ks, but uh, sports books are kind of liking him. He is a cheap play, so I don't hate going to the value option here. The one issue I see is that he just doesn't have much of a ceiling. 24 has been his best game all season long, and that's just not really going to get it done when it comes to a GPP. Uh, Verlander versus the Padres. Verlander's turned his season around to 3.19 FIP over his last five, 3.23 over the last 20, 26% K rate. One thing is that it's only a 19% combined K rate against the Padres, who Padres really work the count and see a lot of pitches. I don't see him working super deep into this game. However, his control is pretty good, so he could do it. We got Darvish next against the Mets. I should also bring up that both these teams, the Mets and the Padres, have been hitting pretty well lately. So I really don't like either of Darvish or the Mets or Verlander here in this spot. However, it is in Petco Park, which is a hitter-friendly park. Uh, but as you can see, the line star uh, projection on both guys just isn't quite there. I got to bring up Carlos Rodon here. So he's making his debut start here. Now, in the minors, the most pitches he's thrown so far was on, I believe, the first. And it was only 58 pitches. So I don't expect him to be fully stretched out. Our uh, projection right now is showing 25. Now, I don't think that is real. I think we're probably going to end up having to bring that down a little bit just because of this is probably taking into account him going with a full game. And I don't know if he fully goes. So be careful with this 25 projection right now. Uh, I imagine we will bring this down throughout the day as a little more information comes out and possibly something on his pitch count. Um... All right, as far as other cheap guys, I think kind of that'll do it. Should probably bring up o uh, Bailey Ober just because he's been really good so far this season and lately. He is versus a very good Baltimore offense. They just put up 14 runs. But look, this guy has a 3.12 FIP over his last uh, 20, 3.75 over his last five with a 28% K rate. So at his price, there's some nice upside here. Very little hard contact, a lot of soft contact, you know, cheap fly balls are pretty much what he's uh, been getting here. And it's a 23% combined K rate. I think you could do worse with an $8,300 pitcher. You could use him, another stud, and uh, that would get you very different. So don't mind it. It is a risky spot, but there is some upside there. All right, let's get into the FanDuel pitchers here. Uh, Hunter Brown coming in at 22%. As you know, I don't love this spot for Hunter Brown. Uh, there's some nice a nice floor there, so I get it because that K rate. Castillo's another one. Don't really love it. Um, but, you know, it's all right. Uh, Andrew Abbott, he's in a very good spot. But as we talked about, there is some regression possibly coming here. Now, with him being 14% owned, I am more likely to use him on FanDuel than I am on DraftKings. His numbers look really good. His K rate's there. 
Brewers strike out a lot. They're not great versus lefties. So in this situation, I'm more likely to hope that regression monster doesn't come today. Whereas on DraftKings, I might be thinking, yeah, that regression may come. Uh, Burns is kind of interesting at only 9,600. Cease, 99. Um, very interesting there. So, you know, it's a real interesting slate as a whole with uh, with pitching. And I think on dra- or on FanDuel, I'm likely sticking to Cease or above ownership-wise. Uh, don't really love getting real different here, especially when so many guys aren't that high owned, you know, like Hunter Brown at 22%, 22% is not enough for me to be like, I'm fading him totally. Um, but we have a lot of good pitchers today, but it's, it's going to be hard to nail the right one. Cause there's a lot of different variables with all of them. All right. Now let's get into the stacks. And view stacks here, highest owned guys, no surprise, it's Boston and Texas, both as we talked about, two of the better hitting environments today. I like the spot for both guys. Uh, Trevor Williams, 5.84 FIP over his last five. Medina's been better lately with a FIP of four, but he has a 5.84 FIP over his last 20. The one thing I do need to bring up here is that Medina is... A fairly highly touted prospect. So maybe he can figure it out a little more than Trevor Williams, who, look, we know who Trevor Williams is. He's not great. He's just kind of an innings eater. Uh, The other thing is that Oakland bullpen is terrible. So you can definitely pick on them. The Washington bullpen isn't great either. So I think both stacks look very good. Uh, Minnesota's a little bit of a sneaky one and cheap. So they'll probably come up on the value stack here. Cole Irvin's not great. Can absolutely see you wanting to go there. Cleveland is in an okay spot as well. Um, Also, I think the Giants are kind of sneaky today. But we don't have all the pitching info yet for that one. All right. So our highest projected, surprisingly, it is the Reds versus Corbin Burns. Uh, look, this Reds offense has been the real deal. The one thing I do have to bring up is some of the stacks are getting a little pricey here. So the stacks that we have here are, you know, all 5K hitters pretty much or 5K or above. Um, that's not really feasible to get in. So I would probably be looking more down at, say, Red Sox 22%. Uh, 22.5K is being more of a feasible, high-projected one. And then the Cardinals coming a little bit. We have seen Cease get blown up a little bit this year. Maybe it happens again today. Who knows? This Reds one is a little more interesting at 23. Dodgers are very expensive. I think today, most likely, you're probably going to be using two higher price pitchers. And so... Uh, these expensive stacks might be hard to get to. All right. Now, value-wise, we got Oakland popping up. Brennan Berdino. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Zach Gallen. Rough one, but it'll be a good hitting environment. Too bad that Gallen is much better at home. As we said, we like the uh, Twins. Casey's in an okay spot. Love the Red Sox. So I think there's a lot of different ways you can go on this slate here. As far as ceiling, Reds, Padres are a very interesting one. Astros, um, we mentioned Castillo's way worse away. So maybe that should not scare you off uh, the Astros stack. This one is super cheap. Astros have been hitting well lately. So it's kind of an interesting play. They're a very low ownership. And with so many games... Let's take a look as, at the slate as a whole here. So Boston, highest implied total, and this Oakland bullpen is bad. So they're very interesting. Texas, very interesting. Second highest implied total going against a bad bullpen and a bad starter. Dodgers are interesting. 
Griffin Canning's an okay pitcher, but nothing great. The one thing, though, is the A's bullpen is decent. Pittsburgh. Look, uh, Dick Mountain, he's been good lately, but we've seen over the last couple of years, he's not that great of a pitcher anymore, and the Pittsburgh bullpen is very hittable. Uh, Colorado, I've seen it is expected that Gomber is pitching, who we know he isn't great, and their Colorado bullpen isn't great. So the Giants may be interesting. Twins are interesting. I think there's a ton of different ways you can go on this slate, but those are definitely the favorite uh, top stacks here. Um, Leverage-wise, let's see. Oakland is interesting one. We talked about the Twins here, uh, Seattle or Houston. Seattle, Houston are definitely kind of the leverage stacks. Good offenses uh, versus pitchers, not in the best of spot, but good pitchers. You just, you know, you need to be able to break down a Castillo early for Houston. And, you know, it's possible, just not likely. But that is a play that could do well. All right, guys. That'll do it for us today. We will be back on Monday. Oh, actually, we won't be back on Monday. This is uh, the last last uh, MLB breakdown before All-Star break. So we will be back on Friday, I think, is the next slate. So I will see you in a week. Hope you guys have a great week, a great weekend. Good luck tonight. Adios.